Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on very important topic pneumonia. Depending upon the present pandemic situation, it is very important for all the healthcare workers to know about pneumonia. First of all, I would like to inform you all that this is my first YouTube video on my YouTube channel. So I seek your guidance and please try to like, comment and subscribe my channel. As a medical or the nursing student, if you really need some of the content to be known by you, please let me know. I will create video and I will try to post. I will do my best for sure. When we receive a patient of 60 years old smoker diabetes mellitus presented in OPD with high grade of fever, right side chest pain, cough and rescue sputum for last one week. So for this type of conditions first of all we have to know what is the causes of uh, sputum secretions, cough, chest pain, pathogenesis of it and complications so that it will be helpful for us to continue the treatment and nurses responsibilities effectively. So hopefully the video may be benefited to you. So continue. So in this video we are going to look on definition of pneumonia, risk factors, pathophysiology, clinical manifestations, different types of pneumonia and for different aspects of pneumonia how we are planning to treat the patient with the conditions and what can be expected outcomes of it. Coming to definition of pneumonia, pneumonia is an acute inflammation of the lung parenchyma often caused by the microorganisms. So pneumonia is an infection in one or both the lungs which will be mostly affecting the alveoli, the microscopic sacs of the lung and pneumonia is considered as lower respiratory tract infection and 12th November is the World Pneumonia Day. During this, on this period of time, we will be making awareness sessions to make the people get aware about pneumonia, how deadly dangerous condition it is. So it is inflammation and consolidation of the lung tissue due to an infectious agent. What is consolidation? Consolidation is inflammation in duration of a normally aerated lungs due to the presence of cellular exudative in alveoli. The alveoli will get filled with much fluid or pus which it should not be filled with any another content in the lungs because it only carries air. If it gets filled with much fluid and pus in it then it leads to difficulty to breathe for the patient. I hope now you clearly know the definition of pneumonia. So now we will have a view on how the pneumonia develops. Most of the time the body helps in filtering the organisms. Especially in this what happens is when the patient will be taking breath. Then when the inhalation process continues. Meanwhile there may be chances for any infected agent to get into the lungs. Into the sterile field of the lung which effects and cause which affects the lungs and causes infection. Coming to stages of pneumonia, pneumonia do not occur directly as pneumonia. It follows uh, stages such as first is stage of consolidation where there will be active hyperemia and edema in the lung. Stage of red hepatization, second stage where neutrophils more congestion fibrin tissue forms in the lung then which will be followed by gray hepatization of the lungs here degradation of red blood cells fibrinose supplementation much more exudate can be seen whereas the last stage is a stage of resolution once the pneumonia is confirmed in any of the stage and patient starts taking the treatment with that when the treatment helps in reducing the pneumonia it leads to healings of the lung Coming to risk factors of pneumonia, it's very simple word inspiration I have given in order to remember for long period of time. Just remember inspiration and elaborate it you can remember maybe for your whole life, right? So 
the word is as follows immunosuppression neoplasia secretion retention pulmonary edema impaired alveolar macrophages RTI respiratory tract infection antibiotic and cytotoxic inhalation tracheal instrumentation such as at the time of intubation or after intubation done IV drug abuses overdose taken by the patient or recently any antibiotic administration to the patient other conditions such as air general obesity smoking immobility also leads to they may also have chances to get pneumonia and another last one is neurologic impairment of cough, cough reflex may lead to the aspiration of content from digestive tract to the respiratory tract there are many causes of pneumonia pneumonia can be by fungal infection bacteria viruses ex more overdose of drugs autoimmune diseases so just we will see in detail about each cause the bacteria which causes pneumonia most commonly are streptococcus pneumonia mycoplasma pneumonia whereas less common bacteria which causes pneumonia such as haemophilus influenza moraxilla cat the viruses which causes pneumonia such as covid-19 which is now presently the most common cause of pneumonia influenza virus adenovirus rhinovirus are the viruses mycoplasmas are not considered as bacteria or any virus but they have traits of both organisms fungal agents such as histoplasmosis blastomycosis pneumocystis carinae and protozoa are the fungal agents which causes pneumonia very badly the the causes which leads to pneumonia is like aspiration of any food content fluid vomitus to the patient also leads to pneumonia or inhalation of any toxic materials caustic chemicals smoke dust gases influenza are the rest of the causes which may lead to pneumonia also coming to pathophysiology of pneumonia any of the causative agents when enter into the respiratory tract it leads to inflammatory pulmonary responses which causes loss of defense mechanism of the lung which allow organisms to penetrate to the sterile lower respiratory tract then develops inflammation this leads to disruption of mechanical defense mechanism such as the coughing and ciliary motility occurs which leads to colonization of the lung causes inflamed and fluid filled alveolar sacs due to that there may be excess exudate accumulation in the alveolar sacs which leads to difficulty to expectorate by the affected patient clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms of pneumonia can be generally sneezing with running nose productive cough sore throat chest pain fatigue muscle aches gray or blue, bluish skin color due to hypoxia by the pneumonia all the systems of the body also will be affected like central nervous system severe headache loss of appetite mood swings vascular system low blood pressure in cardiovascular system there will be high heart rate tachycardia gastric nausea vomiting joint severe joint ache systemically high grade fever along with chills in skin clamminess cool skin with bluish color whereas in lungs lung severe cough with sputum shortness of breath pleuritic chest pain in muscles patient will be complaining of fatigue and aches everywhere in all over the body of pneumonia 
it varies depending upon the causative factors so it can be etiologically infective non-infective pneumonia morphologically anatomical classification duration of uh, uh, the disease condition and clinical classifications so we can go this all in detail Anatomically, pneumonia can be classified as bronchopneumonia. All the bronchi only will get affected of the lung in this type. Lobar pneumonia, only the lobes of the lung will get affected. Whereas interstitial pneumonia involves the area in between the alveoli, the areas will be affected. Clinically, the pneumonia can be classified as community acquired pneumonia. Another type of it is atypical, atypical aspiration pneumonia. Whereas hospital acquired pneumonia, known as nosocomial pneumonia, that can be by non ICU acquired pneumonia or ICU acquired pneumonia if patient is admitted in ICU then there may be more chances for the patient to get ventilator associated pneumonia or else non ventilated associate associated pneumonia so this is brief about the clinical classification of the pneumonias Pneumococcal pneumonia is an infection of the lung produced by encapsulated bacterium Streptococcus pneumonia. Most commonly, this bacteria causes pneumonia in the world. So, coming to clinical manifestations of this type of pneumonia, such as high grade fever stabbing pleuritic chest pain malaise weakness elevated wbc count tachycardia dyspnea and blood streaked purulent sputum coming to staphylococcal pneumonia which is mainly caused by staphylococcus aureus such as methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus commonly known as MRSA in the medical field. The clinical manifestations can be fever with multiple chills, rails, decreased breath sounds, elevated WBC count, dyspnea, blood streaked purulent sputum. In case if the patient is having MRSA, linozolid or vancomycin will be added for the treatment of patient. In the anatomical classification, what we have seen first, lobar pneumonia, only the lobes of the lung will be affected. Okay, that may be like right middle lobe, right lower lobe, or left lower lobe, or the left upper lobe. So only the lobes of the lungs will be affected, in which peripheral air spaces consolidation pneumonia without prominent involvement of bronchial tree. Bronchopneumonia, centrilobular and peribronchiolar opacity of pneumonia occurs here tend to be multifocal patchy in distribution rather than localized to any one region of the lung. In this type of interstitial pneumonia, mainly peribronchiovascular infiltrates occurs which is caused by microplasmas and viruses. CAP that is the community acquired pneumonia it is one of the most commonly type of pneumonia it is infection of the pulmonary parenchyma associated with symptoms of acute infection there will be many infiltrates on the chest x-ray and ascultatory findings consistent with pneumonia in a patient who was not hospitalized or residing in the home facility for more than 14 days prior that to the admission into the hospital. Aspiration pneumonia, there will be overt episodes of aspiration or bronchial obstructions by a foreign body seen in case of alcoholism nocturnal esophageal reflex a prolonged cessation in the dental chair epilepsy also usually anaerobes will be causing this type of pneumonia atypical pneumonia clinically can be diagnosed by subacute onset fever less common or intense 
minimal sputum microbiologically sputum does not reveal a predominant microbial etiology or routine smear, smears such as gram smear or culture radiologically patchy infiltrates can be observed in the chest x-ray or interstitial patterns then by the hemogram peripheral leukocytosis are less common or intense to diagnose atypical pneumonia HAP which is hospital acquired pneumonia can be defined as pneumonia that occurs to the patient after 48 hours of admission into the hospital which was not incubating at the time of admission it means when the patient was getting admitted there was no signs and symptoms of pneumonia but soon the patient gets admitted into the hospital after 48 hours of admission develops the symptoms of pneumonia coming to wap ventilator associated pneumonia which refers to pneumonia that will be arise after 28 to 72 hours after intubation endotracheal intubations the symptoms can be high grade fever cough pleural and chest pain breathlessness additional symptoms including this can be occur such as sharp or stabbing chest pain headache excessive sweating and clammy skin loss of appetite and fatigue confusion especially in the older people then the general symptoms can be occurred such as patient can be febrile tachycardia tachypnea sinusitis central sinusitis especially hypotension and uh, altered sensorium use of accessory muscles for respiration confusion in the advanced cases can be observed for the ventilator associated pneumonia signs of consolidation can be evaluated by dull sounds on percussion bronchial breath sounds can be auscultated crackles increase vf and vr are egophony and whispering as well as pleural rub helps in evaluating wap whereas the investigations which can be helpful in evaluating wap is by the sputum gram staining afb methicillin silver stains koh mount and sputum culture will be helpful whereas x-ray helps in evaluating by homogeneous opacity with air bronchogram HCAP healthcare associated pneumonia which includes any patient who was hospitalized in an acute care hospital for 2 or more days within 90 days of the infection resided in a nursing home or long term care facility received recent iv antibiotic therapy chemotherapy or wound care within the past 30 days of the current infection attended a hospital or hemodialysis clinic for any treatment if the healthcare provider have not followed any of the aseptic precautions for any invasive procedure done to the patient may lead to healthcare associated pneumonia and also the diagnostic evaluations can be done and as investigations such as wbc count blood sugars electrolytes creatinine blood culture screening for retro oxygen saturation by pulse oximeter abg ultrasound of chest montauk test the the diagnostic procedures can be continue as invasive procedures in that bronchoscopy thoracoscopy percutaneous aspiration or biopsy open lung biopsy pleural aspiration where are the other diagnostic evaluations such as bacterial antigen sputum and urine rapid viral antigen detection in respiratory secretions serologically mainly for atypical molecular study c reactive protein serum procalcitonin these are the investigations which can be helpful in detecting the type of pneumonia so that the treatment for it can be selected depending upon the organism which complications of pneumonia a very precise word i have given like flap her 
can remember for a long time which can be easily memorized slap her means s septicemia l lung abscess a a r t s acute respiratory distress syndrome p can leads to para pneumatic effusion h hypotension e emphysema or respiratory failure or renal failure Coming to prevention of pneumonia, how we can prevent pneumonia? It is very important to give health education to the patient or any of the patient family member, such as there must be cessation of smoking if the patient is a smoker, better nutrition to be encouraged, respiratory hygiene measures which is very important because it helps in preventing any bacterial fungal virus infections, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, in activated influenza vaccine or live attenuated influenza vaccine can be given to the patient or the uh, children also in order to prevent any type of pneumonia in the future also medical management for pneumonia most common drug of choice by of the physician is azithromycin which is a broad spectrum antibiotic which helps in treating bacterial pneumonias and next we have a pneumovax vaccine which is given to the specially two years of age or older uh, older people with any of the health problems it is recommended for all adults more than 50 years of age actually this is the vaccine which can help in preventing the infection in future but it do not treat any kind of infections the other types we can consider in the treatment as it depends upon the patient condition such as CURB which stands for confusion uremia respiratory rate which is more than 30 per minute blood pressure less than 90 by 60 mmHg whereas age of the patient can be 65 or more we can divide the patient in outpatient and inpatient if outpatient the patient have not taken any of the uh, any kind of antibiotic in the last past three months can be given for that patient such as macrolides whereas if the patient in the last three months received any antibiotics then fluoroquinolones can be administered to the patient and whereas if the patient got admitted into the hospital the patient can be admitted in the ICU or non ICU if non ICU then moxifloxacin 400 mg will be continued with beta lactam whereas if the patient is directly admitted in the ICU then beta lactam plus azithromycin and fluconazoles will be given depending upon the condition of the severity of the infection to the patient. Surgical management is very rare it's only lobectomy will be done that is the pulmonary resection is performed indications of the surgical management are massive hemoptysis if no response to the medical treatment localized malignancies persistent abscess cavity in the lung due to pneumonia then only the surgical management is continued coming to course most the healthy people recover from pneumonia in one to three weeks but pneumonia can be very much life threatening always keep in mind the mortality rate associated with community acquired pneumonia is very low in most ambulatory patients and higher in patients requiring hospitalization being as high as 37 percent in patients admitted to the intensive care unit so lastly i recapitulate my video by concluding that from the starting we have discussed about definition of pneumonia types of pneumonia risk factors causative agents and um, pathophysiology of pneumonia and the treatment regimen so hopefully the video may be beneficial for you if you really like it please like comment and subscribe to my channel Thank you so much for having such a lot of patience. So these are my references. Uh, if you need, can go through it. Thank you.